I like your background. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh oh. We don't have a speakerphone. Oh, darn. Dang. <laughs> we'll have our own meeting. <laughs> yeah, really. There's enough of us here. <laughs> <laughs> How's that island you guys all strapped together? <laughs> it is so beautiful. That is so cool. It's just gorgeous. I don't think I'm going to be joined by the other Rotarians here this morning because apparently they're going on a donut run. Ah. <laughs> Too funny. So C. Endicott, I'm Tracy. How are you? <laughs> I am doing well. Let me update. Yeah, I, I don't know. I always change that, but it never stays the same. But I'll put my full name in there. Is the presentation portion around uh, about 8 o'clock? About that, yeah, 8.05. OK, great. Oh, where where is everybody else? Are they at? Where do you all meet in Lake Stevens? At the Educational Service Center uh, okay. downtown. Oh, okay. Yeah. <gasps> nice, Chris. Oh, there they are. <laughs> and James. He can't hear us, right? If we can't hear him. I don't know. Maybe. Can you guys hear us? They don't have a speaker. Oh, audio. Yeah. I'm not. There's no video. 
Hey, Kevin. Where is that Kevin? Hey, how are you? Good. Kevin, go over to my boat. All right, I'm coming on over. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. Yeah. Too funny. <laughs> I'll just yell fire and he'll run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Gina. Look at that sunshine. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? The water is flat. Where, where are you, Rochelle? Um, we're in Westcott Bay. It's just right off of San Juan Island. Beautiful. So there's John and Spencer and Nancy O'Brien. Oh, huh. here comes our dedicated Rotarians. <laughs> no. How are you doing? Top of the morning. <laughs> I just turned mine on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can hear them. In the room? I don't know if this is the address or huh. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Chris. <laughs> Excellent. Good. So now Eileen, you're on mute. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Give me one second. Okay, no worries. That's great. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. Have bad Technical journey. difficulties today. We're trying to get the IT guy in here, and he's AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> but we have Kyle, who helped us out here with the whole deal. So, yay for Kyle. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Give me okay. one second here, okay. and I will have your quote. Okay. Yeah, we can do. A, we have a couple guests here today. So, Gary, you want to introduce your guest? Yeah, Louis Locke from uh, Longview, friend of ours for many, many, many years, and he's visiting. Awesome. The wives are still uh, shopping. Uh, <laughs> resting. Resting. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. I'm ready you know, whenever you are. Here, he's almost become permanent, so we're <laughs> hoping. <laughs> you just show what he does. Hey, Grant. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. John. Uh, maybe we can get this our speaker today. Okay. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, uh, she's obviously remote up there. And uh, I got a brochure that is from the North Cascades Institute right here. Oh, awesome. Great. Looking forward to that. Thanks. Okay. Eileen, how are we doing so far? Yep, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, we're ready. Can you hear that? I'm afraid to touch this phone. Yep. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. So today's quote is, your mind is a powerful thing. When you fill it with positive thoughts, your life will start to change. All right. Can you say that one more time? Sure. Your mind is a powerful thing. When you fill it with positive thoughts, your life will start to change. Awesome. I like that. That's a good one. Always thinking positive. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure you type that out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of wedding anniversaries. We have uh, Hannah Sladek and Adam Sladek, same last name. Can you believe this? And they've been there married for four years and zero months, like yesterday. So that's pretty cool. Woo! <clears throat> and then we have David Leduc 
and his wife, Melissa, 16 years as of today. That is wild. Yeah. So that's it. And I don't know if I've missed any birthdays, so they don't think there are any this week. So happy birthday to everybody that's had a birthday and who's coming up to have one. So happy birthday to all you guys. I had a birthday. You did? Yeah. Was it recent? Yeah. No. Chris. Okay. Yes. I think Lauren's uh, we have to do another shout out to Lance because I totally skipped him last week and it was not that his profile was not because I'm an idiot. What was <laughs> what's the shout out for? For his birthday last week. I skipped it in the Oh, okay. Lance Morehouse. Everybody, Lance Morehouse had a birthday yesterday. So let's give him a great round of applause for what he does. Oh. <laughs> it was Tuesday and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was already saying to last week. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Thanks for that tidbit of information. So uh, <clears throat> so now we'll move on to reports. So I have the treasurer's report. Do we have any? Do we have any? What? We're, so money's coming in from our sponsorships. Thank you very much for collecting those from the people who made commitments. And those are starting to flow in, so thank you for that from everybody. Okay, good. Thank you for that. <clears throat> I just had a, a, a question. Can you guys hear me on Zoom? We can good. hear you, but it's really I'm hard to hear you. Okay, is that Kevin there and Michelle on the boat somewhere? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That looks awesome. Oh, yeah. People we know. <laughs> Anyhow, how about the treasury? How about the uh, secretary's report? You sure that's what you want now? I'm not sure. <laughs> Where are we? I thought I was on a boat. Hey, I'm going to test you. When's the next board meeting? Hey, you want this? Yeah. Oh, she is first. Uh, August 12th. Uh, just so that you know, if you haven't read any of the uh, report uh, Steve James puts out for the history, the Rotary Body recognized four car shares. Uh, we still have uh, three potential members that we're working with. One of them did write me and tell me that she was she's a teacher in Spanish and she does find the try and get here soon. Can we turn out the volume one of the <laughs> yeah, just, Maybe turn that one off. <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, Nancy and I spoke to a lady at the uh, farm market and uh, we introduced ourselves and Jim introduced ourselves. She didn't introduce herself, but Rochelle, she knows who you are. <laughs> she's a friend of yours, so she's going to talk to you about oh, that. Yeah. That's it. Okay, great. <clears throat> Thank you for that report. Now we have my report as president elect, and we'll talk a little bit about um, corpse cakes and coins is coming up. And so our theme is what is our theme? <laughs> corpse, Vikings. corpse, cakes, and drinking. Vikings. <laughs> Vikings. <clears throat> So we have a. Uh, I want you dress like that. Can you? I dress this way every day. <laughs> Saturday. So um, a couple of things we want to be thinking about is our raffle sales, and Angie's in charge of that, and she has tickets. If you guys need more tickets, she's in. She's in charge of that. And one thing I want to reiterate is, is um, the tickets we don't sell, we must turn back in so we can account for every single ticket. Dogs aren't allowed to eat your tickets and things like that because they didn't sell, but all the unsold tickets have to be accounted for. So just keep that in our minds. <clears throat> and then uh, the event is going to be uh, Friday the 24th and the doors open at 530. So we're kind of getting ready for that. And then September is just around the corner. So we got to be thinking about procurement, silent auctions. We're thinking about having an online presence and silent online. We can't sell any alcoholic beverages on through the online event because we're all kind of back together, I guess, from the COVID thing. So we gotta be thinking that. 
So we might have a sign on auction online and, a, and anybody can correct me. <clears throat> um, and then we'll have a silent auction at the mill as well. And those can have alcoholic things in them. And then we're working on the silent auction. So we wanna have things that we can bring in. Everybody should be bringing in two bottles of beer, two bottles of wine and a basket. <clears throat> Some baskets can be like a uh, car washing kit or dog things or a trip to Hawaii, those kind of things. Miles. Yeah, mileage, whatever. And, and yeah, <clears throat> the live items are the, the best thing is if you think of an experience, you know, like Hawaii and trips and there was a hood canal thing. So we want to start working on those kind of things and, and bringing that stuff in. So it's regressive dinner, just don't advertise it well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, so things like that. Yeah. Has somebody been identified yet to collect the baskets? I don't think so. I don't okay. think we've had that yet. Right. Yeah. Going, we don't need to answer today. To Brian Reese's office. Okay. Okay. And then Ra Rochelle will yeah. take the photos for the online catalog. We'll have a catalog. And we thought that since it'd be an online, we would show everything, but you can't bid on the alcoholic things or the live auction. We thought that we would have people come to the event at the mill because people are wanting to get back together. So that's kind of how that would work. So, um, how about three days, two nights at Sven's Mud Hut? Yeah, the Mud Hut, the mud, right. Yeah. All the grass there in the fields you can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I think that's kind of, if anybody has anything else to set up, we're going to look for people to help us with that. We're kind of getting wound up for that. So, we want to start bringing in our basket items and our beer and wine and stuff like that. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. It'll be at the mill. We're gonna probably meet over there in a week or so to kind of look at the layout and, and do things like that. And then we'll send an invite out to everybody to kind of take a look at that. So, yeah. Should I encourage people doing raffle ticket sales at the market to dress as Vikings? We didn't yeah. do it this last week because of the Harry Potter theme the market, which was amazing. But just a lot of fun and we're out in public selling tickets to Go ahead and dress up like a bike. It draws attention when they have to say you're dressed up like a bike. Unless it's 90 degrees. I was going to say, if it's 70 or under. Well, yeah. at, at least maybe fix the first. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I don't have that option. <laughs> and so we'll, we're, we'll, have, we'll, we'll have the event catered out again. We have a guy that's going to do a pretty good job of that. And then. Um, we got to get a hold of, uh, I'll get a hold of Tracy Scott and probably Steve Hobbs and try and start getting vendors brought in. If anybody knows of a vendor for wine or beer that we could have set up there, um, that would be wonderful. And donations as well. So we want to kind of like get that going. So anybody has any thoughts on that? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but we don't need to take a meeting. Time. Yeah, no, right, right, right. You can bring your bottle of mead. Yeah, mead and Viking blood. <laughs> I saw that at Hagen's the other day, Viking oh, blood. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Anybody know anybody at Costco? Maybe they're to the point where they might be kind of becoming yeah. more interested in being public about their plans. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, they're building a store down the road. What more do you <laughs> <laughs> So, Rochelle, next year, maybe. Anything or Jim, anybody on the auction? Yes, we're talking to you people in the San Juans. <laughs> Are we still on mute? You can't see. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, talk, Jim. Yeah. Um, yes. The answer is yes. You do have yes, we're good. Okay, great. Yes. What, what harbor are you guys in? <laughs> this might be uh, harbor. Uh, <laughs> so what was bar, what? harbor? <laughs> Where's Scott Bay? Ah, We're up in West Scott Bay right now. By Rose Harbor. Like um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we just recruited Kevin to be the MC, so <laughs> yes. that's good. Okay, need right. visual. Do yeah. open up your pocketbooks. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Kevin can be the other half. Yep, Ken is definitely. Okay, Kevin and Ken, good, thanks. 
All right. Like what? Okay. Have one on us. I know, I know. Okay, so we have club services with Keith. Do you have anything over there? All good. All good. Okay, all good. Um, I don't know. At some point, we'll be bringing breakfast back in here, but we'll figure that out as we go, I guess. <clears throat> and Brian, look, Brian isn't here. And Foundation Jim. Oh, there we are. Uh, we spent it all, so we're broke. <laughs> It's a Viking boat, I'm sure. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a Viking boat. Yeah. All Which right. So Tracy, is Tracy Chris? here? She's on Chris. Uh, I'm here. Tracy. Hi. Hi yes. Uh, international Services Report. Uh, thank you to everyone who replied yes to donate the $500 to the Lighten wildfire devastation. So um, I emailed our secretary and she said, no problem, she's on it. She's gonna get that taken care of. Uh, that and also our 2000 dues, uh, $2,000 in dues for IPA. And speaking of IPA, if anybody wants to go to Honduras the first week of April, I'm really working on, I might be able to go and I'm gonna drag my mom with me. So cool. if he wants to go, let me know. I don't know what we'll be doing. Not I'm dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thanks Tracy, appreciate that. How about membership, Ron? Uh, Gary mentioned the, the three members that we were pursuing and it might be interested, but we don't know what that is. So okay. Right. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> Uh, vocational Lance, anything on vocation? I think I'll skip this week. Uh, all going good. Thanks. <coughs> okay, all is good. Thanks. And interact, um, Kristen. So the food bank is having another food drive today and tomorrow at Tom Thumb. There are two shifts that need to be covered um, uh, Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. And then Saturday, 10 to 12. Anybody here want to spend a couple hours doing good? Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. <clears throat> Scouts seem to be doing well. The girls' group, they're sending a lot of people out to uh, summer camp, which is open, some down on the Oregon coast, some here in Washington. So they're having a great time with that and just. I, I think they're up to about 16 and they got like three more young ladies that are going to join. So that is just gone like this, which is fantastic. So they're doing great. <clears throat> and I asked them at some point in time, maybe in the fall or winter, that they could come and do a presentation, but they'll get a hold of you for that. So, so. And Angie, public relations. Yeah, so we um, have a LinkedIn account that has been sitting out there for a while. I went ahead and linked that for us. Okay. Um, it's still not set up all the way, but you can go and you can find it, add it to your volunteer experience or whatnot. Um, and then the market this last Wednesday ended up being a super huge PR opportunity because of the Harry Potter scavenger hunt that they had okay. and we were a part of. And so people had little clues that they would use to find and collect stamps or whatever for their scavenger hunt. And ours was something along the lines of where will Harry and his, find, and his friends find a group of people who are always willing to help. So that was the clue that the kids and their parents were trying to figure out so that if they didn't know what Rotary was very well, that kind of led them right up to it and, and it really opened us up for some conversations. And then plus with it being as hot as it was, and as much water as we gave out, um, there there was a lot of conversations about Rotary on Wednesday, so that was really good. Over four cases of water. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's the farmers market thing. Or yeah. Oh, time with Mark. Mark. Yeah. We went. We went through. P Diddy. <laughs> three and a half cases in the first shift. Well, we went through about three more. Yeah. So that we had two full cases, and then what was ever was in that tub. And we were out before you showed up to for relief. Brian probably spent the whole time running back and forth to Jay's for water and ice. Wow. 
That's there good. is a chance that the farmers market could end in August because they're not getting the volume that they uh, had anticipated. Those uh, vendors. I met with the with the mayor on another subject yesterday, and uh, he said it's not looking like they're going mm -hmm. to because that's under contract, mm -hmm. and. Uh, she talked to him about maybe pulling the plug in uh, at the end of uh, August, but that's not final yet. But uh, that's one of the things that could happen. When's our next? When's Rotary's next meeting? Okay. Eileen? No, it's Brian. Yeah. It's not the other one. Mm. That's too bad. <clears throat> When I was there, it seemed like it was a lot of stuff yeah. happening. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It's probably just died down because heat and summer, yeah, heat and vacation and stuff. Yeah. You kind of notice that too if you drive by Davies Beach. It's like, even though it's 83, we're getting used to that weather. There's nobody there. It's like, where is everybody? You know, when it first started two months ago, everybody was down there and the sun's out, and now there's nobody. So I don't know. Well, when I did check out a handful of raffle tickets to our farmer's market booth. So if any time it gets running low, just send me a um, text or give me a quick call. And for the most part, I'm around and available. Larry, get ready. Okay, that's good. Does everybody have her number or know how to get a hold of her if you need more tickets? You've got access to Club Runner. It's in there, and Club Runner does have an app. Okay. okay, great. All right, Larry, Sergeant Hi. of Arms. Hi. What? Sergeant of Arms. Stand up. <laughs> Stand up. Oh, you are. Hey. 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 Two six three. Thank you very much. It's the first time I've won. Can I go? For <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Is it the truth? It is. Okay. I think it's two six three. I saw a black button. I can't. Black belt. Black belt. Black bottom. Yeah. Black bottom. Look, there it is. Oh, good. You you did it just right. There it isn't. There's your darn okay. five dollars. Okay. <laughs> Now, who is wearing their pin? Or their badge? I have a badge, but no pin. No pin. No pin. No pin. It'll be part of my overall. <laughs> Rochelle, don't drop that in the water. No, DJ. I won't. I've got it on my lanyard. Still got hers. Sven. Sven. You got here. your lutefisk on I got right here. It <laughs> smells like fish. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, this is turning out good. Turning out good all. Uh, who doesn't have a birthday today? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I do have a birthday. It's not today, but I have one today. Yeah. <laughs> I have a birthday comment. Yeah. You're pretty well at this one. Almost as bad as DJ. Really? Don't tell me. Oh, I'll try harder. <laughs> Who doesn't have hair? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit there, huh? Well, that was my other. What was your birthday? Oh, yeah, well, like you do. You didn't want to bring anyway, did you? No. <laughs> I've had too many already. I know. <laughs> so your word really gave all of that. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all. You're kidding me. Top of the morning. I'm good. I think I pressed my luck. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll go to Happy Box. Okay. All right, I'll start. All right. I wanted to be up here to see everybody. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, good morning, everybody. So I've uh, been missing uh, several weeks of meetings here because I've been busy at work and uh, we still need bus drivers. So if you know anybody, uh, have them contact me. Otherwise, we're going to hire all of you. Uh, <laughs> but I'm. Uh, also excited because my son, uh, Jamie, is leaving uh, Sunday morning on a cross-country bicycle trip. He's going to be traveling with uh, 14 other active and retired firefighters from Santa Monica Pier to New York City, uh, arriving on September 9th in time for the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, on the way, they're going to visit uh, Oklahoma City, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and the Pentagon. And uh, so we're super excited about that. They're raising funds for four different foundations related to firefighter cancer research. So I'm super excited. We're going to go down this afternoon, Angie and I, to see him off on Sunday. So that's where I'll be this weekend. Otherwise, I'd help you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here. A happy butt for the farmer's market because it was so much fun with all the little kids in the Harry Potter theme last Wednesday. And a happy butt for our school district IT guy, Chris, because even though there was a miscommunication this morning, he has been awesome at helping us transition this over to Rotary instead of being school district supported. Awesome. Yes. Happy Friday. Well, I got five happy butts and just happy to be here again, but also wanted to mention that. This next Tuesday uh, is the National Night Out Against Crime, and the World Rotary Club hosts that event at Lake Ty Park in Monroe. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, annually, we we get about three or four thousand participants at that event. It's a pretty it's one of the largest in the state. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's, it's a rotary sponsored event. So, I'd like to see you there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, happy Friday. And just to tag on him, we have a national event at Trusted Station. Uh, uh, ice cream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What brand? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they do have black licorice at Trusted Station. So if you like. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll eat. Yeah. I don't care what brand that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any happy dogs. You should be happy you have a new TV. Okay. Well, <laughs> on that basis, I will match whatever you get for the Okay. All right. Well, let's go back to who doesn't have hair. I'm just happy to be here. Who's happy to have hair? Lance is out here. Lance is out here. Lance is waiting. You're on mute. All right, Lauren, since you uh, are matching, I'm going to continue with your tradition and I'll uh, be $58 happy for 58 trips around the sun. All right. So, um, we had the boat parade last uh, Saturday. Super fun. Um, did get hosed down by the fire boat, but, uh, but still, <laughs> really that had was a great cool. time with that. Um, let's see, I'll give Kate Dad's happy bug. Um, oh, there's group our I brought up last <laughs> week in a still theater, and it, it seems to be still good. And so, please take group our on. And um, it's beginning of zucchini season, so don't be surprised when you see something in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I have a happy buck on Wednesday at the farmer's market. Miss Hole, one of our uh, recipients of a scholarship, came up and talked to Brian and I uh, at length, was happy to be receiving the scholarship. She's going to George. Washington University, getting ready to leave. She's looking, she says there's a Rotary Club at GW and she's looking at that and she said Rotary will be a part of her life. 
Oh. And she uh, thanked us. I think she spent a half an hour with us. Wow, that's cool. Very nice. And she's no relation to the Lord. Is she a relation to the Lord? I put in $2 because Lauren will make it four. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a reminder to everyone, she's <laughs> the one that's going to be in the book. Yeah, it's Benedict for breakfast. Wow. Uh, I think it's time to go back to breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But he didn't bring us any. I have a happy five for everybody being here today, and we're getting ready for the Viking event on the 24th of September. Yeah. Out of 20, so. I know it. Yeah, didn't you get much to do the first Oh, do I need change? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any Anybody else? Yeah. Anything? Anything? Yeah. Anybody? All right. Okay. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Larry. Oh, uh, oh, it's me. Oh, yeah. it's me. We on? <clears throat> Can you hear us? Is this thing on? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> hey, I have a happy 20. I am so thrilled that we won most fun boat in the Viking ship parade last um, Saturday during the Light Up Lake Stevens event. We want a $50 gift card. So we need to decide what we want to do with that gift card. And our options are donate it to um, Lake Stevens Arts and Parks because they work really hard. To do. Or um, put it in the Corks and Cakes uh, silent auction. Whatever you guys want to do, maybe take a quick little vote. Yeah, we well, yeah. <laughs> What is the gift card? <laughs> Yeah, no. it's, Michelle, it's a gift card for where? Visa or? Thanks, Stevens Arts and Parks Foundation. Right. Oh, it, well, what's it for, though? Is it a generic gift card, just like a Visa gift card, or like is it a gift card to Target? What's it for? We haven't been awarded the prize yet, so we don't know what type, but it is a $50 value to somewhere or everywhere. But we just need to decide whether we want to put it in corks and kegs or would we like to donate it back to the Arts and Parks Foundation who work so tirelessly throughout the night putting on <laughs> Arts and Parks. Yeah. Arts and Parks. Yeah. 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 We've all decided, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But donate it back to the Arts and Parks. Jim, we need a speech. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. <laughs> One word. Good. <laughs> Okay, good. Thank you to everyone. All right, that's done. So now we have, I don't know how much time do we need? Let's have a good time to start. Okay, good. Don, you want to introduce what we're hey. going to be looking at here? I'm excited about it, actually. Hey. Sure. You can hear it. Well, I'm going to turn the, turn this a little bit, uh, just so there's more of a Mary. view here. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, Except okay. for it's backwards. This, yeah. Do you guys recognize that? Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, Catherine uh, Endicott is with North Cascades Institute, which um, there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which sounds like a really cool place, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I think uh, I would like to go there and learn something. So uh, it's uh, basically a family-oriented uh, opportunity to get out and learn a little bit about nature. And uh, it works for adults as well as kids. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you uh, if you're ready to take it and run. Great, can you all hear me okay? Yes. We can. Okay, I'm gonna present my screen, which means I disappear. So it was wonderful listening to all the great work that you're doing and uh, learned a little bit about Lake Stevens and, and it just sounds like you have a lot of wonderful community activities. So thank you for including me today. Uh, so the North Cascades Institute, uh, as uh, Dawn mentioned, is located in the North Cascades, Cascades and we are an organization that does environmental education. Because I can't see you, make the sound of a Tweety Bird if you are familiar with us. 
I didn't hear any Tweety birds, okay. <laughs> so that would also tell me that you probably have not visited our Environmental Learning Center, which is located above the Diablo Dam along Highway 20. Uh, to help us get situated in the place that I'll be talking about for the next 15 minutes, let me ask you a few trivia questions. True or false, the North Cascades National Park has more glaciers than National Park. Well, the North Cascades has 519 glaciers covering over 90 square miles between Snoqualmie Pass and the Canadian border. The North Cascades contains the most glaciers in the lower 48. Uh, you may have thought that Glacier National Park in Montana had the most glaciers, but they uh, only have 35 named glaciers of which 25 are active. When that park was created, they had 150 glaciers. So it's just that it was a park that was created before the North Cascades National Park, which was created in 1968. So if you've been up along Highway 20, maybe you've stopped at Washington Pass over Overlook and seen this uh, Diablo Lake and this vibrant shade of turquoise. What causes this is that the, the lake has a green bluish tinge due to the very fine particles that are produced by the surrounding glaciers, which is called glacial flower. And it's this color because it's known as Rayleigh scattering of visible light. So a little environmental science here. Very fine particles scatter short wavelengths like blue or green, far more than the longer wavelengths of red or yellow that we see in our sunsets. So the shorter wavelengths are scattered back to your eye, which produces this color. And I was just up there last weekend and this is exactly what it looks like. <laughs> so the North Cascades Institute inspires environmental stewardship through transformative <coughs> learning experience <coughs> nature. We are a conservation nonprofit and our mission is as stated on this slide. We work in the heart of the North Cascades ecosystem and we are fortunate that this is our classroom. This is what it looks like in the fall. So mark your calendars to go up in late September, October. The landscape is bounded by the Fraser River on the north, the Okanagan Highlands and the Columbia Plateau on the east and Snoqualmie Pass to the south and the Puget Lowlands to the west. The greater North Cascade ecosystem comprises one of the most intact wildlands in the continuous United States. We believe that public lands are a vital resource for education, recreation, and renewal. We believe that shared experiences strengthen families, communities, and societies. And we believe that nature is a source of inspiration that helps people lead healthy, well-balanced lives. And we believe that lifelong hands-on learning about the natural world should be accessible to everyone. And we believe that diversity is a source of strength and resilience. The North Cascades Institute was founded in 1986 to conserve and restore Northwest environments through education. Today, the Institute is a national leader in environmental education, connecting more than 12,000 people to nature and to one another annually. In the early 80s, early 80s our co-founder Saul Weisberg was working as a backcountry ranger and believe that education could be used as a conservation tool. The idea that through transformative experiences in nature, a sense of place and a connection is built. And this experience leads to an increased awareness and desire to protect our local environment. In the late 90s, three partners, Seattle City Light, North Cascades National Park, and North Cascades Institute began discussing the possibility of an environmental learning center campus within the North Cascades National Park. This idea was submitted for funding as part of the mitigation with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission relicensing project. Uh, six years later in 2005, the learning center was opened just above Diablo Dam. It's possible you may have been hearing lately in the news about this relicensing project. It's also called FERC which is abbreviation of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, because we are now in the process of relicensing again. Uh, the dams are in the process of being relicensed and that will happen in 2025 and they'll be relicensed for the next 50 years. This campus now serves as the hub of the majority of our programs and the establishment of the Environmental Learning Center allowed us to expand our programming and grow to serve more people. 
The campus features 16 buildings, outdoor shelters, a trail system, and dock access to um, the lake. Our facilities include three lodges with ADA accessible accommodations for 92 guests, plus housing for staff. We have a lakeside dining hall that serves local and organic meals in tune with the seasons. And we have multimedia classrooms, a research library, and an aquatic and terrestrial labs. And our library focuses on information and stories of the Pacific Northwest, especially the North Cascades, covering nonfiction to novels to field guides. We also have an outdoor amphitheater, outdoor learning shelters, and trails that lead to the surrounding wildlands. We offer the Skagit Diablo Lake Boat Tours. This program is run in conjunction with Seattle City Light and has been around since 1928, long before North Cascades Institute. On the tour, you will learn about the area's natural history, including biodiversity, geology, as well as the unique relationship between the North Cascades environment and the Skagit River Hydroelectric Project which provides clean, low-cost, renewable power to the citizens of Seattle, supplies about 20% of Seattle's power. And the history of the project, uh, which also focuses on the indigenous inhabitants and um, just a lot of different components to this cruise. Uh, the program reopened after COVID in early July of this year. Tours are offered twice daily, Thursday through Monday, from now until September 6. In the fall, we offer twice daily tours on Saturday and Sunday, and our program staff provide the administration and tour guides for the Skagit tours. Another way you can become involved with us is through our adult natural history seminars. These are offered at the Learning Center and in areas around the North Cascades. We offer a wide variety of topics such as geology hikes on Mount Baker or wildflowers on Sock Mountain, watercolor painting at Rockport State Park, birding excursions, nature photography, and more. I'll talk about the impact of COVID a little bit later and how our in-person program has adapted and continues to evolve. We have family getaways. I was just up at the Learning Center last weekend for one of our family getaway weekends. They are offered on five summer weekends, so we have two more left. They provide a chance for parents to be outdoors with their children without having to worry about lodging or meals. They even have the opportunity to drop their kids off at a little uh, children's camp so then the parents can go canoeing or hiking. Uh, it is a unique experience for people who might not otherwise explore the public lands or the outdoors. Uh, we welcome multi-generational groups of all shapes, sizes, and types. And we provide a full slate of activities to join in and you can pick or choose whatever you want to do. We have another program called Base Camp, which is learning and lodging. You choose your own adventure as a way to explore our campus and learn in the Cascades. And we don't really focus on one subject. Uh, you arrive in the afternoon and you have a, a dinner, a breakfast and lunch and you can um, participate in the activity we offer or you can choose to go on a hike or just hang out by the lake. But you know, we offer birding and canoeing and evening dam walks and, and exploring the lake. Oops, sorry, got it one slide ahead. We also offer conferences and retreats. So for example, if Rotary ever wanted, it, if your Rotary club, or a group of clubs wanted to have a retreat, you could organize through our conference and retreat program. We also have weddings. We host four weddings a year and they rent out the entire facility. Uh, we can hold up to 92 people on our campus. And then during your stay, we uh, supplement your programming by offering experienced staff naturalists that can provide educational opportunities or hikes around our campus. We do a number of school programs. Um, this is where I do a lot of my work as a fundraiser is raising money for our school programs. So uh, the programs are affordable for children throughout the region. Uh, we know that the natural world offers a safe and rewarding environment for learning and healing and the benefits of time spent in nature are crucial for young kids, especially after COVID. <laughs> So Mountain School is our longest running program. Possibly some of you or your children have participated in this. It's been around since 1990 and it was originally held in the New Halem Countground, but now we hold it at the Learning Center. It's a two night, three day program for fifth graders where they learn with their classmates about the natural and cultural history of the mountain ecosystem. 
these are some of the numbers about who we reach and the scope of our program. For most of the kids, this is the first time they visit a national park, spend a night away from home, and discover the connection between their lives, communities, and the environment. One teacher said that Mountain School equalizes the playing field. All students can access the content. Their shared experience in nature is a necessary background for knowledge. It counts for a lot of the science learning for fifth graders throughout the region. We have another program called Mount Baker Snow School. We took this over in uh, 2016, working with the Mount Baker Ski Area, also partnering with the US Forest Service and the Northwest Avalanche Center. It's an outdoor learning adventure that combines applied science with snowshoe powered exploration. And the students dive into hands-on learning about weather, watersheds, and climate science. Again, here are some of the numbers of who we reach. Uh, this program, we primarily serve students from our rural and underserved communities uh, from all over Whatcom and Skagit County. One teacher said, our students live along the Mount Baker Highway, which ends at the stunning Artist Point Vista. Yet most have never seen the view there, played at the ski year, or hiked the nearby trails. Hands-on experiments with inspiring instructors enhance the student's academic experience and instills connection to the natural world. Another one of our day programs is Forest School. This is run in partnership with Bellingham Public School District and the Gordon Carter Conservation Site on South Lake Whatcom. Third graders explore the forest ecosystem through the perspective of an animal that lives nearby, such as the flying squirrel, the jeweled beetle, or the pileated woodpecker. The experiential lessons incorporate teamwork, problem solving, and creativity. Students use inquiry, observation, and reflection to investigate themes of the habitat, adaptations, and interdependence. This year, we started a program called Connections because of COVID. It is a collaborative effort between several local nonprofit environmental education organizations. It was supported by the Whatcom Coalition for Environmental Education. And we ran outdoor education programming in three school districts, Whatcom County, or uh, in Bellingham, Blaine, and Mount Baker. Another program that we've run for many years is Youth Leadership Adventures. And this program is happening right now. It is a transformative learning experience for local youth to jumpstart their engagement with nature, stewardship, and community. We take high school kids um, out on an eight or 12 day backpacking or canoe cam camping trip in the North Cascades National Park or a Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. Each session has a focus on outdoor leadership and science and sustainability. During the summer outings, students canoe, backpack, camp, and complete stewardship projects while receiving hands-on training in outdoor leadership, field science, communication skills, and public speaking. Students walk away with a sense of place and community, environmental literacy, and new leadership and communication skills. With this program especially, we focus on underserved youth. We provide scholarships, gear, meals, and transportation for the kids. And that level of support really opens up the experience to youth who otherwise would not be able to participate. Most of these kids, again, have never been inside the park or have ever been camping. This is a really transformative experience for them. They overcome their fears, learn how thing, learn new things about themselves, the world, and build strong relationships with their fellow cohort. A student from a few years ago said, I came here thinking that I knew a lot about myself, but there was something missing. I was able to find out who I was as a person and as a leader. Another participant said, I realized that my identity is not found only in my race. You discover who you are once you find your sense of place. Nature helps me get away from distractions and find myself. In 2019, 26 Skagit County kids participated in YLA as well as 61 other students from all over Washington. This year, we have returned to the back country with up to 70 kids participating uh, over the months of July and August. And we have kids from King, Snohomish, Skagit and Whatcom County. Uh, we are really excited to be able to be outdoors again with our high schoolers. So COVID, what happened in 2020? Well, I started my job in April of 2020, which was interesting. And I'm proud to say that the Institute was very adaptable, adjusting our staffing and programming every six weeks to meet the needs of our employees and constituents. 
our leader, Saul, was committed to keeping as many people employed as possible, redeploying our staff in ways that were not part of their normal job responsibilities, but doing work that enhanced our facilities and our programs. We did a lot of long delayed maintenance on our property. What was supposed to be a 30th anniversary of Mountain School, we adapted to Mountain School at Home, which is a program that continues to be a hit and is a great way to get kids outdoors from your own home. You can access the programming on our website by just going to ncascadestart.org and typing in Mountain School at Home. Our learning center was closed and our youth leadership program was adapted to four week long programs in Skagit and Whatcom County Parks. On the positive side, we created a brand new virtual programming for adults that has been growing ever since. We've served over 2000 individuals from over 37 states and three countries. And we were able to offer six weeks of base camp in the fall with no COVID outbreaks. This year, uh, as you can see, a lot more is happening. Uh, we were not able to do mountain school in the spring and it's we're not sure if we're gonna do it in the fall. We'll know by the end of August if that's an option. Um, but our Skagit tours, base camp, um, family getaways, all of those are selling out quite quickly. And again, I was on campus last weekend and it was great to see everybody just really having a wonderful time in the outdoors and making new friends. So how you can join us, you can sign up for one of our virtual or field programs. Uh, our virtual classes have no limit and the registration fees range from five to thirty dollars you can uh, sign up i'll put in the chat once i finish the program i'll put in the chat where you can sign up you can join a skagit lake diablo boat tour there are two hour programs um, it's a beautiful drive up along highway 20. Uh, just keep in mind that highway 20 uh, passed just over the pass is closed because of the fires um, in mazama and um, you can also support our work, which, help, which, which helps us reach out to the school programs that I mentioned uh, earlier. All we ask is that you get outside and if you can do it with us, all the better. So thank you again for uh, including me in today's Rotary program. I'm going to now stop sharing the program so I can be back on screen and answer any questions. And I just put in the chat the links to different um, parts of the program. And Don also has the cards that I sent him that he could be sharing with those of you that are attending in person. It looks like they're connecting in the room. So while that happens, um, I went and to Mount also Baker. Put your question in the chat, if that's easier for you. Mm -hmm. Can everybody hear okay now through the computer okay. audio? Perfect. So I have a question. Uh, is there a logical limit to how big a family uh, needs to be to be part of the family program? Oh no, family getaways is, uh, we have it like last weekend when I was up there, uh, right now we are at, we're allowing 50% capacity um, so we had uh, 40 participants and some families were a mom and dad and one child or a mom and a child or, um, you know, two weeks ago, we had uh, a family that was 20 people. <laughs> okay. Good. So it, it can be the full range. The family getaways are a very popular program. They are currently sold out this year. So I would say if you're interested in it, uh, mark your calendar around March, February or March of next year. That's usually when we get our schedule. Um, but if you if you get our um, if you sign up for our email, you'll get notifications at the beginning of every month, and we always update our calendar there too. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds and, like and we have some families that uh, go through our conference and retreats program to reserve the property for a family reunion. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, that'd be cool. Yeah. I, I noticed that 66% of your uh, total program participants paid no fee. Who, who are your primary funders for that? Our funders for our school program are a range of private foundations, uh, individual donors, and we have a couple of tribal community foundations that also fund our programs. How it works for Mountain, so with Mountain School, we work with the school districts 
and they, they do all the registration of the kids because we're working with fifth graders. So we're not communicating directly like with email with a fifth grader and a school pays per child and the school fee, um, it, it varies. The more free and reduced lunches that are, at, that are at that school, then their fee decreases. So that's, we have a sliding scale for Mountain School. And then for youth leadership adventures, um, the kids apply on their own. These are high school kids and they indicate in their, in their application what type of financial assistance that they receive. And from there, you'll have a range of kids getting either, you know, they might need 25% of the fee covered because that's a more expensive program. It costs them about $1,500 because it's over a longer period of time with a lot of equipment and food. And then we have donors who, who give scholarships for the kids. Any other questions? How about online, any questions? Okay, Catherine, thank you and the Cascade Institute for putting the presentation thank on. You. It was wonderful. Really appreciate it. Come join us. Bye bye. We have a $25 uh, gift certificate for the Dolly Parton Imagination Library Education Foundation. So thank you again. And Madam President Rochelle, do you have any final words of wisdom for us today? Ahoy. Oi. <laughs> Don't forget to drop the anchor. Right. All right. I got one more minute. So. Okay. May you turn. All right.